tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 430. Today, a new phase of construction has started on the new Circle Road project. Hear how long it's expected to last. Lexington police are investigating an overnight shooting that sent one man to the hospital. And a former Central Kentucky police officer who admitted to harassing a teenage referee is now suing the city of Lexington. We'll tell you why. WKYT News at 430 starts now. Good afternoon, Sam Dick and Amber Philpot reporting a traffic alert for anyone traveling on New Circle Road. This afternoon, crews began blasting between Versailles Road and Old Frankfurt Pike. It is all part of a widening project. Our Jordan Villines has more on what drivers need to know. It's our top story at 430. In an attempt to widen some parts of New Circle Road, the blasting will take place twice a day for the next several weeks. And as you can see here, the end result of today's very first blasting. The blasting is part of a two year widening project on New Circle Road that will expand the current roadway between Versailles Road and Lee's Town Road from four lanes to six. Transportation officials say that until next September, that stretch of New Circle will be limited to two lanes in each direction, and the drivers should expect a longer commute and heavier traffic. But in the long run, officials say that this widening project will benefit drivers by helping the traffic flow in that area. Once this is complete, by September 30th, there will be three lanes that will be open on the outer loop from Versailles Road to Leestown Road. We um, want to stress that this is an improvement project that will really assist with the traffic flow for New Circle. Transportation officials recommend that drivers who typically use this route try to find an alternate route until the blasting phase of this project is complete. In Lexington, Jordan Valines, WKYT. And you should know this, until construction is completed on this project, the speed limit will be reduced to 45 miles per hour on New Circle from Leestown Road to Versailles Road. Police in Lexington are looking for suspects after an overnight shooting. It happened about 11 last night at a house on Manhattan Drive off of Bryan Station Road. The victim told police that people he uh, does not know came into the house and started arguing before he was shot. Interviewing the neighbors to see if they heard or saw anything to help give us some leads. Uh, you know, it's the physical evidence will help us figure out some of the things that are going on in there. He is in stable condition at UK Hospital. It took five departments to help put out an overnight house fire in Powell County. That fire destroyed a home on Little Brush Creek Road in the West Bend community of Powell County. That is just outside of Clay City. A viewer sent us in this eyewitness picture from the scene. And in that picture, you can see the home was already engulfed in flames when crews arrived. Firefighters say no one was home when that fire started. The remote location made it difficult for crews to get water to the scene. The state arson investigator is expected to take a look at that fire at some time. It is another cold and cloudy day across our area. I heard you at 4 o'clock say dreary. Yep. That's a word. I wish I had a dollar for every time we've used it, Chris Bailey, because we've it's been popular, hasn't it? Yeah, that is uh, unfortunately uh, taking the place of snizzle over the past 24 hours. But yeah, dreary, guys, has been the name of the weather game for most of December already. A little sunshine may try to break out over the next couple of days, but nothing to really get too, too excited about. Temperatures over the past 24 hours, hey, we're colder now than we were at the same point yesterday. As advertised, we're much colder across eastern and southeastern Kentucky. It's only 33 in Jackson, 34 in Mount Sterling, Lexington checking in at 35 degrees. Throw the wind into the mix, a lot of upper 20s are showing up, and that's what you're going to feel like if you're outdoors. The wind chill is basically what your body is telling you the temperature is as it feels the actual thermometer. And those gusty winds. Life first alert defender, maybe a stray snowflake or two, not a whole lot out there, but the cloud train just rolls on. Though we're starting to thin that out a little bit across northern parts of Indiana into Michigan, and some of those thinner clouds will try to scoot in over the next couple of days. But in the short term, a stray snowflake is a possibility this evening. Chilly air is going to hang tough. That's the one constant of the next several days. Even on a day where we get a little sunshine, normal will be as good as we can get around here. Changes to the weekend forecast, maybe not so good compared to some earlier forecasts and what we will see next week. We'll change it up even more, guys, an active seven-day forecast when I come back in about five minutes. A former Lexington police officer who resigned after admitting to harassing a teenage referee 
is now suing the city. Keith Spears filed a lawsuit against Lexington's Fire and Police Pension Board. He's been denied a disability pension twice. According to the Herald Leader, Spears' lawsuit alleges that three doctors determined a 2006 ankle injury left him disabled. In January, Spears pled guilty to harassment after he confronted a 13 year old referee at a soccer game in Scott County. There are new questions today about the story of an alleged gang rape at the University of Virginia. A friend of Jackie, the alleged victim, is criticizing Rolling Stone magazine and standing by her friend's account. Juliana Goldman has the story from Charlottesville, Virginia. She was looking for a piece that would easily be sensationalized. UVA junior Alex Pinkleton says Rolling Stone reporter Sabrina Erdely had an agenda for her story. Find a very innocent victim and a monstrous perpetrator. It's not hard to find a lot of survivors here and it's also not hard to find a lot of survivors that have stories that are more verifiable. Pinkleton says the trauma Jackie suffered and the pressure put on her from the reporter are responsible for the inconsistencies in Jackie's story. I definitely believe Jackie was sexually assaulted. Um, since day one, anyone that was there the night of, the friends in the story, Andy, Cindy, Randall, they've all said she looked distraught. She said to them that she had been sexually assaulted, and that part has been consistent. In the article, Jackie says her three friends, identified as Andy, Cindy, and Randall, found her on a street corner shaking in her bloody dress. The Phi Kappa Psi house, where the alleged incident occurred, loomed behind them. CBS News reached out by phone to the individual identified as Andy. He told us he does not remember seeing visible injuries on Jackie on the night in question. And when he met Jackie, it was nowhere near the Phi Kappa Psi house, but in front of the first year dorm. He said he was never contacted by the Rolling Stone reporter to corroborate Jackie's account. I think more than anything, I just want to know what happened that night before she came to us, he said. The University of Virginia says it's pressing ahead with reform. In an interview with the Washington Post, University President Teresa Sullivan said UVA has been working on the much larger problems that have plagued so many schools. I want to make the point that we have been concerned about these issues of sexual assault and alcohol use for a long time, she said. It's not just all about the Rolling Stone story. CBS News reached out to Rolling Stone, but they haven't gotten back to us yet with a statement. Juliana Goldman, CBS News, Charlottesville, Virginia. Well, early this morning, CBS News received a statement from an attorney retained by Jackie with the Central Virginia Legal Aid Society. And she says, quote, I'm sure that you can all understand all of this has been very stressful, overwhelming, and re-traumatizing for Jackie and her family. At this time, our position is still no comment. The Better Business Bureau is warning shoppers about a holiday scam. Heather Clary with the BBB says people across the country are falling victim to it. They buy a high-tech end item like electronics. They get it home and later find out that the box is actually full of bricks or paper instead of what was meant to be purchased. There have been stories popping up around the country where people have gone in and bought a high ticket item like an iPad or a PlayStation or an Xbox, got the item home, opened it up, only to find that somehow a thief has replaced it with bricks or paper and the contents are gone. Tonight on WKYT News at 6, we'll have some ways to make sure this latest scam doesn't happen to you. Time Warner Cable will be sticking around in Lexington. The city council has approved a 10-year franchise agreement with the cable provider, according to the Herald Leader. Last night, Lexington city leaders signed off on a series of resolutions following months of tense negotiations. The agreement includes longer business hours and stiffer fines for the cable company if they violate consumer protections. Time magazine has named their Person of the Year. Coming up, we'll tell you the details of the five different covers.